What's going on guys? Today I am here with this massive news roundup for Destiny 2 and what we've learned over the past week, including the leaks of the vault, the raid, secret areas, engrams and much much more. But before we get into the video guys, I am giving away a Rockstar Destiny 2 in-game gear code. To win, simply drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below. Okay, so let's get into it and let's start with something from earlier this week. You can now pre-install Destiny 2 on your Xbox One consoles ready for the release of the game. PlayStation users will have to wait until the 31st of August, uh, the end of the month, uh, before you'll be able to install. I've actually put a guide on this which you will find linked in the video description if you do want to check it out. Uh, we also found out earlier this week that the Taken King subclasses will be obtainable within Destiny 2. Now for a while it's kind of been obvious but now we know it's 100% as seen in recent European Dead Zone gameplay. We have seen the retrieval of quests from I believe a lost sector chests which triggered the start of your ability recovery. Seen on screen now are those very quests obtained. We see for the hunter the fractured arrow hunter relic. Notice the void icon next to the text. We also see this one right here for the warlock, cracked talisman. Also notice that arc symbol there too. We also saw this image leak too of a warlock arc subclass. Now as far as I know I don't think we have a image of the titan subclass relic but I'm pretty certain it's there for us to work towards upon release. So third subclasses are available via quests Now most people are speculating these will be the Taken King subclasses but that hasn't been confirmed yet but it makes more sense looking at what we have so far. Okay so we're going to move on and Bungie's new clan features are now live via Bungie.net and the Bungie companion app. There you can create your very own unique clan emblem, organise your clan as well as a few other new features. I've actually made a video discussing the new clan options, which I will link within the video description if you do want to check it out. Next up I want to talk about planetary scout vendors. Now we know there is a vendor scout on the European dead zone, we have seen enough of him. His name is Devrim K. The real question is though, and I believe it will be the case, uh, the question is will there be planetary vendors on every other planet within Destiny 2? I actually think there will. Now these vendors will level up uh, just like a faction but by trading materials for reputation. On the European Dead Zone we use planetary materials called Dusk Light Shards as well as EDZ tokens. Collect them, head to the vendor and trade them for a rep which in turn ranks him up and can reward you a faction package in the form of a legendary engram which opens up into three different rewards. Now until recently we didn't know what came from these rank up packages but now we do. On screen now we see the entire loop for Devrim K of the EDZ. We can see he has his very own set of armor and weapons as well as a set of gear which does rotate. Now I have a more detailed video going over all this gear which can be found linked within the video description if you do want to check that out also. Okay so about three days ago the trophies for Destiny 2 on PS4 were released. On screen now we are seeing them very trophies. There were 14 in total, some very interesting ones to say the least, which we will discuss with corresponding topics later in the video. We also had a leak from a Polish user who had some seriously interesting pics. Now the quality of these pictures is really poor, but we can still make out what they are. The first interesting one is this picture of Destiny 2's inventory. Now many people have covered this topic but almost all have missed one defining factor and that is the icons on the left hand side. The very bottom one is actually a organise button so we can arrange our inventory which is a real great addition. Also this image leaked of our vaults. Notice we have 200 spaces and again we can see the organise tab on the left. Epic. The second page within our vaults is the collections page I believe. Now we also have this leaked image which I believe is the first time we've seen a ghost shell with a shader applied to it which looks pretty cool. Now the final image from this leak I want to show you guys is this one right here. It shows a titan with low health in third person. This is no doubt just after our light has been taken and before we find the farm within the European dead zone. We know we will play a short bit of the story in this section of the game in third person where we're struggling through a kind of forest sort of thing where we're using the mantle to jump over logs etc etc. So I'm guessing this is that instance. Okay so next up I want to talk about this tweet by Mark Nosworthy. He states in D2 it's no longer advantageous to equip your most powerful gear when equipped in engrams. We check for your best possible loadout now. 
Now this is a big but great great change and I think we all can agree on that. Basically what he's saying is the game automatically checks your loadout and inventory and gives you loot based on that. Now the amount of times I have decrypted a bunch of engrams only to realise my best gear wasn't applied. Now that don't matter which is great. Okay so moving on and next up I want to talk about the confirmation of three of coins being absent from Destiny 2. This was confirmed by PC Gamer when they stated the following talking about exotics they saw. The character I played didn't find any exotics on patrol and in the absence of the three of coins buff from the first game we aren't likely to. But I was able to bring a couple into the EDZ, playing as a warlock, who are essentially the battle majors of destiny. I was wearing an exotic helmet called Eye of Another World, which you guys can see on screen now. In addition to giving priority targets a glowing red outline, it also speeds up the charge rate of your grenade, melee and rift abilities. More impactful was my exotic pulse rifle, the Graviton Lance, which was a thing of absolute joy, which you guys can also see on screen now. It fires three burst shots, the third of which has higher recoil and damage, and on kills releases what looks like a mini black hole that travels past the target wrecking additional havoc. Oh and when you pull the trigger it makes a bzzm sound like a guitar amp being flickered on. To fire the Graviton Lance is to know true love. You guys can hear that now in the background. So they state in the absence of three of coins and because they were invited to Bungie to play this game early and review it, it's safe to say what they mention here is legit info. But for how long will this last? Now three of coins within Destiny 1 is a iffy situation. Some people enjoy them and some people don't. We won't get into that here, but if you have an opinion on them, you like them, you don't like them, let me know the reason behind it down below in that comment section. Okay, so we just saw two new exotics, the Pulse Rifle, the Gravity Lance and the Warlock Helmet, the Eye of Another World. But confirmed there are also old exotics from Destiny returning to Destiny 2. We know of the Starfire Protocol Warlock chest piece. We also know of the Taken Out Titan helmet. Those were revealed weeks back, but this past week we have seen two more. One being the Titans ACD slash zero feedback fence gauntlets. And we also saw the Hard Light Auto Rifle. Now the Hard Light returns with a twist. It now offers Void Burn. Let's hope they get it right this time with this weapon as it was garbage in the first game. Talking of exotics, this week we also saw this new Osiris weapon. Now many people thought and still think this is a Trials weapon. I actually made a video on this weapon stating reasons behind why I don't think this is a Trials weapon and that video can be found linked within the video description. Basically I believe this 5 burst pulse rifle will be a quest leading up to or from the first DLC expansion for Destiny 2 come the end of the year which is confirmed to be Osiris themed. Now whether I'm right or wrong we can all agree this thing looks incredible definitely giving off that exotic impression by design. Okay so moving on and it was revealed via a Rolling Stones article on Destiny 2 that there will be secret elusive areas we visit throughout the game. The place in question today is the Dark Forest. After travelling through a Taken Light teleport we end up here, a place very reminiscent of something out of a Tim Burton movie. We adventure deep into this very eerie looking forest in search of this psionic source which is a power element. Now details are scarce here and to be honest I'm actually glad of the fact I want to experience this for myself, spoiler free, to see the outcome and story behind this mysterious place. But I love the idea of otherworldly dimensions and this is up that street, I cannot wait to learn more. Okay so talking about mystery, over the past few days info has been gathered and put together to try and figure out further details on Destiny 2's first raid. Now there has been in my opinion many hints dropped by Bungie and I spoke about them all in a video yesterday where I went into true details on all surrounding this raid which you guys will find linked in the video description if you do want a more in-depth actual look at the details surrounding it. But to keep it short and sweet for this video, but to fill in you guys who do not know, basically Loot Smith a while back at the Destiny 2 reveal event wore this hoodie repping a random logo. During the beta of Destiny 2, concept art was seen, that being this on screen. 
It has since been updated and shows a ship flying down to this planet that seems to be being sucked into whatever that thing is. The PS4 trophies released revealed the name of Destiny 2's first raid, calling it the Leviathan. Leviathan is a term used to describe enormous deep sea creatures, but it's also commonly used in naming spacecrafts of short two. The logo on Luke Smith's hoodie is the same shape as this thing, with the circle being represented by that ball of light on top of this enormous craft, if that's what it is. Also notice the bright stars to this thing's left. They actually form a constellation. The constellation is called Cetus, which in Greek mythology means sea monster. Also seen was this image here, which looks as though guardians are preparing to enter the structure we see and believe to be the Leviathan. Notice the orbiting rocks too. Also, it's important to remember the actual name of the Leviathan Raid Trophy. It's called Belly of the Beast. So we enter the beast and take on the raid. That's basically where we've gotten to so far with all the clues Bungie have dropped. It's all speculation, but it's also very interesting at the same time. And some of it makes serious sense. And on that note, guys, I am ending the video. Anything new drops in terms of news, leaks, or so forth, I will have you guys covered here on my channel. So subscribe if you're new around here. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really does help me out. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand, but you and I. Get it right